Introducing the second chance offer from BetMGM. What'd he say? If you bet on a player to score the first touchdown and instead he scores the second, boom, you get your money back in cash. Straight cash? Second chance, you heard? What if my guy fumbles? And some other guy scores first. Second chance. What if you need a second chance to land on the field? This offer only applies to touchdowns. You all right? I hurt my spleen. Get the second chance offer from BetMGM, the sports book born in Vegas. Yo, what's up, KG certified fans? It's the big ticket here. And I got an exclusive second chance football offer from BetMGM just in time to kick off 224. On the BetMGM app, place a bet of any pro football player to score the first touchdown in a game. If he scores first, you win. If your player scores the second touchdown instead, you'll get your cash back. Lock in your first touchdown picks, ride with your favorite players, feel the energy of every touchdown and tackle all season long. Let's get it. Bet with the sports was born in Vegas. Head to BetMGM app, grab that promo, and let's lock it into the football action. Only on BetMGM, the official partner of KG Certified. You did. Road trip, you already know. So we had to hit New Jersey. You can't be with Bed MGM if you go to the headquarters, right? And you gotta go to the headquarters. Man, we gotta go to headquarters. We're going to headquarters. So we crashed headquarters, y'all. We are at the headquarters of Bed MGM. You hear me? This is where all the magic happens. All the, hey, the KG2100, hey, the redeem codes and all that. That's where all this is right here. Hey, the Jamie Foxx from the LA, the Boston, the King, all that right here. Came out of here, the brains. In the headquarters, at MGM. Hey, what's up, Mike? What's up, man? How are you? How you doing, man? Morning to The second I get there, I meet my dog, Mike, and he walks us in. It was inspiring to be in the belly of the beast and see how it operated, you know? Hey, is this where the magic happens? This is where the magic happens. <laughs> hey. hey, what's going on? Oh, man. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Good morning to you, uh, man. We had a set up for your ticket. Hey. Now, is this is always like this, or y'all just did this because I just came through here? What? Sorry, my, I got swimmers here. I gotta get one of these for the crib. You know what I'm saying? That shit was fire. Listen, if I could have fitted it under my t-shirt and got out of there, I would have. Man, we've been asked for the Lions, man. We've been asked for the Lions for three years. Adam, can we get two Lions in the studio, please? If not, just tell us how much it is. FAS in the chat, you know what I mean? This is the brain. This is this is where all the advertisement, this is where all the every, ideas. This is all, our, all our total operations. Oh, wow. This is our headquarters. So it's set up for like 120 desks or something like that. Oh, wow. This is fire. See the spot? It's dope. It's cool. It was really quiet. It was very, it had a calming energy in there. I can definitely say that. We walked in and it was just calm. Everything was chilled. Everything was bed and jamming. Had the lions out and had this over here. It was not what I expected. I thought it was gonna be the Wolf on Wall Street. And people was running around and need, and the phone was ringing, and yes, and then Bedham Jim, can I help you? And Bedham Jim, can I help you? And Bedham Jim, line one, handicapper, da da da. I thought it was gonna be this whole, and there was nothing. There was none of that. How you hey, how you doing? Uh, what you laughing there? Baby, hey, how you doing? What you watching? What you watching? Nothing. Just scrolling? Okay. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Kevin. What's your name? To Angelina, nice to meet you. Like your hair. Thank you. Hello, ladies. Hi. Are y'all twins? Am I seeing double? Okay. Kevin. Hi. How you doing? Michaela. Michaela. Gigi. 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 Like y'all shoes. I see y'all. Yeah. They're big okay. basketball players. Big basketball players. Really? Live. Hey, listen. The bi my my biggest point in basketball is always follow through. People shoot the ball and then put their hands down. Don't ever forget to follow through. Okay? Nice, me now. nice meeting you both. How much digital data information, how much when you have a space like this, do you have to allot for that? Because that's a huge part of yeah. that industry. BI and data is huge, right? We make a lot of marketing decisions based on that, right. uh, decisions with players, the traders. Yeah, yeah. So data is everything. So y'all really work like a like a professional team, like 
This we, is really operating like a franchise. We, yeah, 100%. We are a, tech, uh, a technology company, yeah. is the way we look at it, more than like a betting company. So we want to have your experience be as seamless as, you know, you're, you're placing an order on Amazon. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's more than just betting, right? So you have the experiences we can tie to with Vegas or, you know, meet and greets with somebody like yourself. Yeah. So that's where the whole MGM part <clears throat> comes into the bet MGM. What's this back here? This looks like the control room. room right here. Tell me what we're looking at before we go in here. We can't put this on camera, right? We can. Just for two seconds and then get it off. Yeah, so, so this is the trading room. So oh, these, these are all our traders. Um, you're going to meet with Seamus and Christian. Oh, shit, like a NASDAQ? Yeah, pretty much. They're shifting the lines. Obviously, they're watching a bunch of content right now. Um, whether if there was a game live, it'd be on right now. So this got to be probably a stressful job, eh? Uh, sometimes. High caffeine. You yeah. definitely got to be on your ones and twos. Yeah, it's, 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 it's almost 24-7. Oh, wow. One of my favorite uh, rooms out of all the places that I got to see in here was, was this place called the Data Room. And the Data Room was where all the numbers are configured, and it's kind of like the room that you don't really get to come in here and see, and you know what I mean? So I got to actually get a, access to that, which I thought was really cool. I haven't seen a lot of content where uh, betting engines and betting houses actually show that belly of the beast, and I had access to it, so I thought that'd be cool for the fans to see a lot of where, you know, they're betting with and a lot of the stuff that, you know, BetMGM puts out is actually coming from this room right here. Kevin, man. Christian, hey. Nice, nice to meet you all, man. How's it going? Yeah, so. I just want to say what's up. I was like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the magic happens, eh? That's right. Yeah, Mike said it's at home and here's some other room, but I said it's this room. So, <laughs> so what actually goes on in here, if y'all can tell me? Yeah, so this is, this is the trading room, so pretty much any bets that start coming through, we're watching them as they come in, any big bets that come through. Uh, we'll make a decision on if we want to take the bet or not. It didn't look like they let nobody come through there and do none of that. That's what everybody was all at, like, oh shit, we got cameras in here? Oh shit, y'all letting the camera in the data room? Are we, are we doing it? Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, this is the data room, and I was like, yo, just like the secret sauce in here, boy. We're players, and you're taught to go through the rope, right? Anything else is obsolete. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't think that you know, because right now, if you bump your knee getting out of there, you still have to actually go do whatever you do and come back, right? right? So that's the idea, right? Lean now, it's like, no, can you really make it to the bathroom? Right? Like, <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? To where you be like, oh, my, hey, hey, ch chill, chill, I'm good. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But being yeah. on this side now, being able to report it, see what you guys do, or yeah. just all the information, data. How important is data in all of this? This yeah, is probably I mean, the, that's, that's, that's it? That's how it all goes. That's how everything's getting made, is based off the data, just previous data. So not knowing if a certain player is gonna play really skews that data, especially when it's a key player. Is it a right way to be able to get information, or if in a perfect world, if you can get information, uh, say a player's injury, what would be in your, I don't wanna say right or wrong, but. 10 minutes doesn't help anything, right? Yeah, no. But in a perfect world, what would you like to get the information to be able to set some of these lines? Yeah. Early as possible, probably? Yeah, it's early as possible. I mean, a lot of times with the regular season, it's always game time decision, but like finals games and playoff games, we got a pretty good idea if the player's gonna play or not. Mm. I mean, Porzingis this year was a little bit different because they were kind of being murky with like, oh, he might play, he might play five minutes. Because he was he making play. the line jump too, yeah, right? Yeah, right, and, that, right? Yeah, so he, and he was playing so well at the time right, too that right. it was, kind of important to the line. So yeah, those are those are definitely the top. How much did his game one affect his game two in the line? Because game one, I was like, oh, what's Porzingis going to look like? Then he came out like, God damn, you see Porzingis? <laughs> yeah. how, how much does his first play help his second, uh, his first game help his? Yeah, I don't remember the, I know his MVP went up pretty high. Uh, that's it, four and a half. Oh, four not that half, much, didn't it? Six and a half to seven and a half. So it's already, it's not going to be as much as you would think. It's not one player unless it's like a Jokic, because like you always, always have to factor in like who's the replacement player, like how big is the drop off. So let's say Horford gets more minutes than he normally would, he's still a good player. So if it was, I don't want to say downplay about other players. No, no, let's no. Say it was like you're a, saying real shit. Well, let's, say yeah. it was like a, let's just say it was like a, a significant downgrade from his minutes to the next players. That's when you'd see the line. Like when Jokic, back when before, like uh, like when Jokic is out, he's like a six point swing at sometimes. Yeah, he because his replacement yeah. is just yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. play the DeAndre same. DeAndre Jordan was coming in behind him yeah. at that time. It was a big difference, big drop off. Yeah. So the the importance of the player, it's more of the replacement than it is necessarily just that player. Mm. A lot of the stuff that's put out comes out of that room from 
overs and unders come out of that, you know? Odds are being made in that room. Information is everything, and I never thought of it like that. Because if I'm playing you, the information I got on you, I need it, right? For whatever. But not to put in, I, I never thought of it in the ways of where it's being used in data and betting and setting line. I, I, man. Because then if you knew that, Yes, a lady here. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna say some other shit, but you know, if he ain't what you think he is, and I'm gonna you in, you know, cause that go into it. You know what I'm saying? Like I can take his heart and I can you say that. I wonder if that goes into the line. Not as much as you think, in my opinion. Yeah. It is. See, I would actually think that that should go into the line. Yeah, I mean, when we when we talk on our like calls or in here, we talk like that. But when it comes to like the numbers, you know, we. Over time, the numbers are going to play out better. Because matchups, matchups, y'all. I don't know if y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all do this in, 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 inadvertently, but matchups. I already know who I'm playing yep. for the whole year, but I know on what night, right? I already know Thursday how I'm going to be Thursday <laughs> against. You feel what I'm saying? There's motivations that we can't quantify. Like no, I know, you, I know, I know. I'm talking about like that, yeah. the gamification of it, and the, uh, it's it's dope to see them two go like this though and yeah. work together. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Parts, uh, tough to quantify on the data side. Yeah. At the same time, too, we take bets. And then when the sharp money is going, that's where we move the line to. So if the sharp guys are quantifying heart, <laughs> stuff like that, we listen to their money. Yeah, sometimes we don't know what they know. Like you said, you go into a restaurant, right, 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 and Kahuna. No, you, know no, you can't, no. But thank you, man. I know you guys nice are working. You, yeah. Thank you, man. Seriously. Stop thank y'all. Nice talking to you guys, man. After seeing everything, I got to sit down with the um, with the CEO, Adam Greenblatt. Cool guy, too, man. I thought he was going to be uptight. Thought he was going to be a big numbers guy with a pipe in his mouth. Hmm. 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 You know, J.P. Morgan. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was going to come off like, you know what I mean? And he was really laid back, stylish. Had a bald head himself. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I went banking when I thought betting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought, I was thinking in numbers. And I was thinking of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was quite the opposite. Absolutely. Thank you for doing this, man. Oh, man, thank you for coming in, enjoying our offers, enjoying our, our view. You know what's enjoying crazy? Enjoying our people, most of all. I've never seen conversation with a CEO of a betting house. OK. This is one of the reasons I want to do. I want to be able to come in here talk to you, kind of pull the curtain back, let the yeah. fans see kind of the brain behind all of it. I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. I'm not Thank a better. You. I'm not naturally a better. Yeah. You know, I have family that yeah. a betting situation, so that's why I'm an advocate for um, uh, smart betting and bet responsible. I'm huge on that and yep. just helping people and um, encouraging people to bet too, though, and uh, you know, think outside of the box. But I have never seen CEO get on stylish in your fashion, get on here and talk about the vision. You know, that's, what the, that's what this is, so. It's a privilege for me to do this. It's a, that's what we've built at BetMGM. I, I marvel often, I marvel almost daily. Why? Mm. Because we're doing things in a different way. We're trying to bring core values in life, core values of our people into the business, make them core values of our business. Mm. And you know, then it's, it, it's a sector which you know, comes with baggage. You know, the whole area of responsible gambling, responsible betting, you know, play within your means. Yeah. You know, that, that can and has been in the past exploited by others, not paid attention to by others. That's not who we are. Mm. We want to bring this entertainment experience to life in a way that feels right for our players in an authentic way, but also a responsible way, in a way that cares about our people, that recognizes individuality, yeah. that's sustainable. Yeah, what is uh, Bet MGM doing as a business to help support uh, responsible betting? That's, that's dear to my heart. That is, you know, I come from a family with that, you know, that, you know, I've had experience with that. And um, yeah, I always ask Mike about uh, trying to help or, the information that goes into sports, you know, mm -hmm. the information that goes into to players from injuries to, to I don't know, playing style, you know, um, players being in and out of lineups, all of that stuff is mm -hmm. important. So, you know, I've always had a special place for that. Mm -hmm. But talk, could you could you allude a little more to uh, responsible betting? Of course. The, this is a fundamental issue for, for BetMGM and for our sector. 
Um, at BetMGM, we are we're a leader in this space. Why? Because we recognize both the existential nature of the issue, mm. as well as it's the right thing to do by ourselves and by our players. Right? So we've got tools within the product that allow our players to uh, set limits for themselves, mm -hmm. deposit limits, activity limits, uh, time limits. Yeah. Uh, if you want to self-exclude, we can self-exclude. Uh, players can uh, choose to self-exclude, which we absolutely respect mm -hmm. uh, without questions asked. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, we have a, a, a program with the market leading, globally leading, a program called GameSense, which has been integrated with our, with our product. It's in our marketing materials. We've also got uh, a strategic partnership with a company called KindBridge. What KindBridge is, basically helps, it, gives, it offers counseling services to those who find themselves mm. in, in, a, in a problem with their gambling. And so we will provide information, we will provide a, uh, introductions to, to ensure that players are directed to the help that they need. And then the last element, uh, which is recognizing the industry responsibility of this, we have, uh, we, we and um, the leading operators in the US have just established something called ROGA, which is the Responsible Online Gambling Association. Mm, digital. And, and the, the mandate is, let's work together on this, on this, on this critical topic. Yes. And so it, it's funded, we have uh, one of the uh, things we will be uh, aiming to achieve is a universal self-exclusion uh, mm. program. So if you're a player with a, with a, who's, who's having a problem with their gambling and you say, you know what, BetMGM, I'm out, right? We will totally respect that as we've discussed. If tomorrow you change your mind, you're out at BetMGM, but you, know, you can go and sign up with someone else. Mm. We as an industry want to make sure that we are uh, respecting and reinforcing mm. that primary decision, which is I'm out. Mm, yeah. So let's all get together and respect. If you're out with me, if you're out with any or one of my competitors, be out, be out. you're out. Yeah, that's good. That's and that's good, that's, that's good for players. That's good for sustainability. Be fresh, and, maybe have a duration where you come back to it. Yeah, that's totally. A, and then for, you know, you know th this is an example of how the industry responds to some of the cynics that mm. will, will argue, hey, you know, you're just doing it for the headlines and you know, to, to make it seem like you are doing something no. and you care. No. no. That last dollar is not important no. enough. That last dollar is not important enough. That individual player's well-being trumps that last dollar. I love that. And you think everybody in the industry needs to work together on that part? It's the only way to do it. it and it's another reason why the together with our lawmakers, mm -hmm. with our regulators. Politicians and all that. And our yes, politi yes, we, need, we, need yes. to, we need to stop the illegal market. Yeah, yeah. The illegal market is, is, is erodes what we're trying to do here. Well, how long has that been around? Oh, it's man. been around forever. That's what I'm saying. Like, imagine like, it's like a mountain. And you run up to the mountain. This mountain's been here before you've been here. So I guess time, right? Time. Time. Time and concerted effort. Consistency. Exactly. Yeah. When I look at BetMGM's promotions and their advertisement, it looks so different than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's inviting. It's electrifying. I love Jamie. Thank you for having me in these things. Um, I get so much teasing with people, LA, Boston. I get so, because I live in LA, I get so many people coming up to me talking to LA stuff. But talk about that, being outside the box and doing things different than, than the norm. Look, one of our differentiators is our relationship with MGM Resorts. Mm. So one of our, it's, it's in our name. Right. You know, so I, I came from, um, I have two shareholders. One is European, one of the big uh, global leaders in sports betting and iGaming. I came from that part of the world and I put together the joint venture with MGM Resorts. So now I've got two shareholders. Oh, yeah. And what we got from MGM Resorts was, apart, apart from the name, was um, that Vegas DNA that mm. chic, that, that premium experience, gotcha. that focus on player experience. Mm. And so we brought that into BetMGM. We brought that into our communications. We brought that into our, uh, our styling of what we bring to our players' experience. And the other element, of course, is, and this is a an, an, uh, differentiator for BetMGM, 
omni-channel. Omni-channel is bringing together the digital experience, excuse me, mm. of, of sports betting and the retail experience. Mm. Like we live our lives today, right? Our players live our lives in both the digital and physical world. Sure. And we want to be the provider of choice in regardless of your channel of, of choice, as well as when you play with BetMGM, there's the whole world of loyalty and rewards. You play with BetMGM, you earn points, go and redeem them in mm. Vegas. Have a great experience in wow. Vegas with our, with, one, with our shareholder MGM resorts. Wow. So it's almost like forming the lifestyle and... Exactly. Wow. Exactly. That's, that's a different way exactly. to look at it or a yeah. different way to think about it when you're looking at it, right? Well, I mean, we, we look, in, in, if you want the money line on, well, not today, but you want the money line on the Celtics, you can get it in a lot of places. Right. But that full lifestyle, lifestyle experience that, that BetMGM offers, mm -hmm. particularly as we, we, we put our arms around that Vegas experience as part of it, mm. well, that's separating. That's different. One of the things um, uh, coming here today and just being in the brain, seeing how things operate, seeing where things happen. This is, I came here, I said, this is where the magic happens. Mike, Mike looked at me, came and gave, gave me the nod. How much is data playing into all of oh, this? Is everything? Goodness gracious. 80, goodness 80%, gracious. 90% of it? We try not to do anything. I make a cup of coffee every morning, but we try not to do anything without looking at the data first. Mm. Our environment is so data rich. It's, if you like the data, it's a playground. Right. It really is. Why? Because what we, off, what, what we do lives at the intersection of e-commerce and marketing, but also regulation and sports and entertainment all happening in real time because of the journey of a bet. Why? Mm. Events happen when they happen. Yeah. Right? We got to be prepared ahead of time. Mm. We have all of our marketing prepared against that event, which happens mm. in a very narrow mm. window. Right? And we have to serve the right offer to the right person at the right time and make all of that feel effortless. Wow. And it's improvising in that, in that whole thing too, Absolutely. right? You've got to pivot. You know, someone's injured, the price changes, the, the promotion that we wanted to offer needs to accommodate real-time mm. real time, uh, real time changes. Yes. Okay. So the, we need to know, because of regulation, where you are at the time of placing a bet, where you are, who you are, what you've done before, mm how good you are at what you're about to do yeah. so that we can learn from, from you as a player. Yeah. If you're a really sharp player and you're, you're really betting a, a certain price, what does that tell us? That tells us that maybe there's too much value in the price. Mm. If you're the best NBA better we got, mm. right? Your actions have data implicit in your actions and your choices you're telling us something. Mm. And so as a learning organization, through the data, we incorporate that into the evolution of the price. The evil, is this the right price or the wrong price? Should the price be higher or lower? Wow. Just another example. So pricing, risk management, understanding the player, these are all elements of making good decisions and better decisions every day. So with that said, with, with you saying that, it's almost like in anything and almost in competition that can be betted on that fits that structure, you can actually put that into there, eh? Cause so, so, I say this to say that um, anything that has that fits the structure that you just set yep, up, yep. Um, I'm watching you guys be in hockey. I'm, I'm, just, yep. I'm just talking about where well, I'm seeing the diversity of what I see Bet MGM at. Yep. And is that part of the growth of growing this whole thing? Like my next question was this, that you, 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 you're saying all this, and I'm saying like, wow, how, how do you continue to grow this with that? It's got to yeah. be some innovativeness. It's got to be some things outside the box. But of course. from that right there, like, I'm seeing y'all in hockey. I'm seeing y'all in, just got the win of e-gaming and stuff. Just talking about the growth of and what you just so, said. So the ref that. Gr growth, there are a few dimensions of the growth. One, our industry here in the U.S. is young. Yeah. Like the law just changed in yeah. 2018. Yeah. Right? Just a few years. Wow. And, and so now we're in 
Bet MGM's in, in 29 different states with a sports betting retail or digital offering. 29 states, it's a lot of coverage. Wow. Um, so there is a expanding our footprint argument. Well, that's that's been what's happening. So we grow because our addressable market has grown. Mm. But also in each market, we're going deeper into the population. So wow. sports betting, which was previously not allowed, illegal, right. suddenly is becoming just part of your leisure and entertainment bundle associated with sports. Games on, whatever the game is, yeah. is it hockey, is it basketball, is it, it whatever, you, whatever your fandom is associated yeah. with, there is product. Wow. And so where it was previously illegal, oh no, I don't do that, I don't have my guy. Mm. Suddenly now it's becoming socially acceptable, oh. it's part of the conversation. And so there is increasing penetration in the market, increasing participation. So if I look at some of the international markets, some of the more mature markets that are ahead of the US, participation of adults can be north of 15%, 15 to 20% of the adult population. We'll have, a, we'll have a flutter, we'll have a wager at some point. Here in the US, it's, it's not even 10% mm. of those markets where it's available. And so there is, there is opportunity for growth as we penetrate more deeply into, into the population. And then, of course, as you say, there's product. Product, um, what we've seen is explosive growth in the area of, uh, of player props and, and parlays, same game parlays, um, putting together this betting opportunity on which I have an opinion mm. with something else over there on which I, I have an opinion to enhance my my odds to enhance the payout on the things that I, ha I have an opinion about. And the more we offer a more detailed, more bespoke kind of betting opportunities, the more we can make sure that the thing that you have an opinion about click clicks with something that we're offering. That's when it jibes. That's when, oh, I, I, think, I think this, oh, this and this, okay, well, let's put this together. I like the price. Oh, this has been really easy for me. Great, on we go. And it's that kind of increasing the range of, of things that are offered means that we're more likely to have what you want. Gotcha. But this is where the data comes in as well and how the site, our actual website, mobile offering, connects with the data, connects with the product range because we offer a ton, ton. of product. I was going to say right? that. I was going to say that. The process of discovery, the process of personalization, the process of offering you the right thing at the right time that resonates with your betting preferences, with your fandom, that's where the magic in the product um, happens. And that's where the innovation is, is ahead of us. Would you say that uh, politics play a huge role in this innovation and being able to push the line in a lot of this? It's a lot of it. Politics. Politics. Look, in an election year, that's a, it's an important question. Absolutely. I think the, generally speaking, um, politics does not play a particularly large role uh, in our space. Does not play a particularly large it role. Doesn't? Generally what we need is cross-party support. For growth of, of, of something like uh, wagering, you need, it, it needs to be down, down the middle. You need to have both, uh, both left and right uh, leaning voices supporting it. Otherwise, it's, it's given the nature of the issue, it's too easy to block. Mm. You know, the, you, you will have, uh, we've tried actually uh, in the last 12 months to expand our footprint in the US and some of the later states are, are, are proving challenging yeah. because of some philosophical uh, positions against the category. Mm. So in order for the category to move forward, you need support from both sides. So that mindset has to change. And the, I think mi the mindset has to change. That's what I'm saying. But it's part of our job as well, though. Right. That mindset has to change. The, the mindset doesn't change spontaneously. We need to show, we as the regulated operator community, we as BetMGM, need to show we're reliable partners for the government. When we make a mistake, we put our hands up and say, we screwed up. Own it. Here's what it is. Own it. Here's what we're doing to fix it. We're serious about protecting players. It's not just lip service to yeah. that. That sounds good for, for, for you know, for, for press. Integrity is everything. Integrity is everything. Yes. Integrity is everything. Mm -hmm. And so we need that. We have a role to play in that. 
And that doesn't happen overnight, particularly yeah. when you, you're interacting with those who come into the conversation with a negative bias, mm. without really interest in, OK, well, let's, let's look at the data. Let's really explore what's going on. You know, let's forget the headline I read over there that was clickbait for, for you know. Or oh, that was the, put there. That was put there. That's what that, I'm talking about here. The traditional conversations that don't want none of this to happen, that's been making money on gambling forever. Mm -hmm. That's why the UK is ahead of us. That's why you have better numbers in, over there than over here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I uh, mean, uh, uh, there, are, there are definitely opposing voices. Absolutely. That are seeking to protect that which came before. That's what I'm saying. And, but and the question is, got to move forward. Is it, is it good for, for, uh, for all betters in, this, in our regulator? Is, it, is not having regulation good for betters that are doing it anyway? The answer is no. Why? No player protection. Right. No transparency of the money. Right. No protection of players. You know, you've got to look at the whole ecosystem. We've got to protect and sustain the whole it's ecosystem. Jungle. It's, it's a jungle. It's a jungle. We see, we see the best of it and the worst of it, man. Honestly, it's a, it's a fascinating industry. Somebody has to drive it, though. Yes. And someone, the head of the snake or the head of the top of the hill, king of the hill, the lion, the lion, you know? So I, I totally get it. And you know what? If someone's going to show the industry on how to do it, why not the best, right? Well, we like to think so, and that's certainly what we aspire to. No, that's and, what it is. I know. wouldn't be with Bed Jim if y'all didn't think y'all was the best. Oh, man. I, th I thought I was the best, and I think I'm the best at doing what I'm doing, so I, we align on well, that. We, well, we think so, too. I mean, that's why, uh, that, that's why our roster is short. But our roster's the real deal. The Lions. The Lions. <laughs> I like the Lions, it. my friend. I like it. Thanks so much. I wanna, no, no, no. I want to I wanna continue to go. Yeah, um, go. I want to ask you a couple more if you have a, a, a little more time. Sure. Shout to my, uh, Mike Lanzo. You know what I'm saying? My guy. Bet him, Jim. Him and I was having a conversation about um, e-gaming. And I asked him, where did esports go? It just mm -hmm. seemed like it just, I don't know. Just, I don't see any esports. I'm a huge gamer. Yeah, and uh, he and I got he got me excited talking about you know just the possibilities of where that growth is to being able to, you know, implement some some betting and and and, and taking advantage of that, which I'm super excited about. Um, I guess my question is, how do um, new sports? I see WNBA has an electrifying following. How do new sports actually jump and get into some of uh, yeah. some of the uh, uh, betting gets installed into their structure? Because I feel like that actually helps. Also, college football, college basketball, college sports, period. I know they got underage issues and stuff like that, but yep. for the growth of where we are, mm -hmm. um, new sports that have um, potential to, to be able to tap in and, mm -hmm. and into, into, the, into, this, into this category to where it helps the sport yep. project and makes it more exciting. Because betting is really the excitement of it. It's like totally. when you're really passionate about something, then you yeah. bet on it. Oh, why are you sad that I bet? Yeah. Right, a hundred percent. So, yeah. So there, there are there are a couple of layers to the question. I apologize, think that apologize. No, I'm no, all I, love it, I love it. I love it. As you're talking, I'm, I'm so yeah. I apologize. Esports, esports has been in, for, from a through a sports betting lens. Esports has been the generational disappointment. Hmm. Coming why so? like why, so? why? Because no one's cracked it. Ten years ago, when esports and the the arenas were full of fans, continue to be full of fans watching live gamers like do their thing, two billion participants and fans worldwide, where are the betters? Countless teams. Where Count are the betters? And the problem has been, there seems to be a gap between the experience of the game and the, the connection to a bet. Mm. No, oh. one's, no one's cracked it, and I'm not sure, where, and you talk about innovation, and I'll come back to, to, to uh, the, the sports catalog in okay. a second, because okay. it links your question about politics yep. and the, the, the sports itself. There see, I think that there is a potential for innovation of technology, the, the, the technical innovation, how we consume our media to have an impact on this question, the bringing together of esports and betting. 
They go I, together. I, I think the world of virtual reality and mm. how we present bets and how we present content and how we go from one thing to the next, when those things can come together, I think there is a, a place for the convergence of esports and betting in a way that hasn't really worked out yet because mm. today, Betting is a second, primarily a second screen experience. So your primary experience is this, viewership, and your secondary experience is betting the game. Mm. Where your primary experience is more immersive, when your primary experience in esports is more immersive, that second screen doesn't really fit as well. Mm. It I see, I see, you know what? You know what? You're gonna have to come Saturday night to Nate's house. <laughs> and he's having two K specials. Yes. And they're betting dollars on dollars or whatever they're doing uh -huh. because I think I'm betting you and then my boy Kool-Aid against your boy Peanut <laughs> and we having them two play. So Sounds it's like fun, by the way. It, it definitely is something there. Yes. I, I'm in the I'm in these rooms, I'm in these uh these banters, these ritters that go back and forth. It's something there because after you pick your team yep. and I pick my team, yep. that's the bet. Yep. So that first window probably needs to be the bet to, hey, let's bet. Word. 2020. Okay, cool, cool. Who you got? Who, this. So I'm seeing that there just on a bigger level. Can that be done on a bigger level? It can be done. There, from, there, is, there are no technical restrictions. There are no pricing or risk management restrictions. It can be done. There's enough, there's enough data. There's enough... Uh, information about how the game works for us to be able to price things with a degree mm. of, of of confidence, and that's critical, by the way, for for our business. We take real risk, so when we when we put up yep. a price, we standing behind our yep. price. You yep. want the price, you got the price, mm. right? So there's there's real, and you know if you if you're better than we are, consistently, you're going to win over time. Mm. You know if our price is wrong we are going to lose real money over time. So there's, there's, there's real risk at stake. But this is linked to the expansion of the, the, the category. There is no impediment in us taking on and pricing new sports. Where we come into challenge today is that in every state that we operate, almost every state that we operate, there's basically a menu of things that we're allowed to bet on. And it's in the, that menu of things requires, for example, an independent uh, an independent oversight body, clear rules. Basically, there needs to be a framework that ensures the integrity of the event gotcha. and ensures the outcome of the bet. As it should. As it should. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the younger sports, the younger leagues need to prove themselves mm. to, to our regulators in the States. Frankly, we'll, we'll support mm. things that... that we can rely on, we'll definitely support because more content really, as, as I think you alluded to earlier, expands our uh, potential addressable market and it's good for growth. So, these, so they need to mature? They need to mature. Gotcha. Gotcha. But there's no impediment. I got you. How, how important is content with what you're doing these days? These days it's everything. These days it's everything. I mean, this is, our whole business is really content. We don't, we don't have anything on the shelves. What we sell is an experience. And Ultimately, content is the fuel, uh, the fuel to that. What is um? What would you say is? I wouldn't say a Super Bowl, but what's something big, or what's next for uh, BetMGM that's that can have people excited? Uh, big milestone. Uh, big milestone is uh, next season's actually. We've um, through our other European shareholder, we acquired a, a technology company last year called Angstrom. Angstrom base is, uh, allows us to expand our offering in sports uh, pretty dramatically, um, improve our same game parlay offering, Im mm. improve how players can combine bets, improves the performance uh, of our product, it makes it quicker, quicker to get your bet okay. on. And so, We've been working really, really hard with uh, with Entain to get all of the benefits of that company into our market ahead of the next foot uh, next football season, the next season, gotcha. basketball, football, etc. Gotcha. Coming up in August, September, October. So really, it's going to be a busy summer for us. We've right. now got uh, we've exp the the first league uh, that we delivered was um, was baseball, mm. and. Early results have been really, really encouraging. We still were, we like to identify ourselves as the home of the home run. Like that. And um, 
we've seen a 209% increase year on year on home run bets as a result of the expanded offering, the improved offering. And so really what we want to do is take all of those angstrom benefits and uh, apply them to all our other sports. So we'll see a significant improvement in product from last seasons to, to, to this. Oh, wow. Mm. I got to ask um, about our relationship. I don't, you know, at least from KG certified, can, can have a better, better partner in this. So I think, thank you guys for just supporting us and keeping us steady. And I've, I've been loving this, this, this partnership forever. I just wanted to know if it was, if it was fulfilling you guys. I know we, we were set to be at a certain numbers. I think we surpassed some numbers. I think we've really been performing. I wanted to know if you guys was happy or if you guys, what was you guys' take on our partnership with KG Certified? KG, there is an element of this, which is we at BetMGM want to work with inspirational, like-minded mm. human beings. And forget the business element of it. On that, it's only been positive and only been beyond our expectations. And the man in person is it's even better than the highlight reels that I've been watching, man. <laughs> Honestly, it's uh, really enjoyed that. So only positive things to say. From a business perspective, KG Certified has gone from strength to strength, as, as all of your, your viewers know, your listeners know. And, um, and we've been part of that. And we're you know, excited to be part of that. It, is, it, it fulfilled and exceeded our expectations. So I want to thank you for that. I don't thank you for the day, man. I think thank I learned you. a bunch today. Good, good. I'm a dope, man. Thank you for letting us come in here, get on everybody's nerves in here. So thank everybody who had the work today. We apologize for messing up your work. We apologize. <laughs> but this was dope, man. You're thank always you. welcome. No, thank you, man. I'm like a kid in a candy store today, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Get you certified. We out. Takeover is real. Taking over. We're taking over Adam's office today. Aaron is to take over. After the interview, man, Adam, um, I thanked him, and uh, he, he he actually wanted me to join one of his morning Zoom, in which he speaks to over like 600 employees on a Zoom, and he wanted me to come say hello and say two words. I'm the supporting act today, because really, the star of the show today is one of the stars of, of the show for Bed MGM has been one of our partners for 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 many years now, and. Uh, we love him. I've just spent the last 20 minutes talking to him. His, you know, if he wasn't such a superstar, he should be working for Bell MGM like every day. Because honestly, the, the energy, the authenticity, the values framework, the communication style is... Anyway, shut up, Adam. Please, sir, look who we got. Hello, everybody. It was a Zoom call with a bunch of people from around the world. I was shocked that these people were KG fans. I was shocked. I didn't, I didn't anticipate that. But yeah, everybody had their jerseys, a lot of Minnesota jerseys, a lot of Boston jerseys. I got to come into the brain today. I got to come into the office, mess with Adam and his crew. So yeah, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. Show some love. Big ticket. Already. You already know it's a green summer too. Don't forget that. Where you're green. <laughs> But yeah. Adam, I have to say, you're giving me a heart attack by that. No heart attacks allowed. No heart attacks allowed here. No heart attacks allowed, please. Can, can, can we please show too. some love for too. KG? Are you kidding, Ben MGM? <laughs> KG, let's go. Yeah, let's go, let's go. So this is all of them? This yeah, is this all. just wow. some of them. Wow. Yeah. Holy snap, look, look at this. Holy it's snap. Everybody. Oh, um, wow. oh my God, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Oh, Where's wow. a KG jersey? I have it in my closet. Oh. Let's go, KG. Oh, let's go. Yeah, that, that, yeah, knock the dust off that thing, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Put that thing on, go outside. Oh, that's dope, man. All right. Oh, wow. What's happening in the office? Why KG is there today? How come you're in the office today? Um, well, Adam uh, gave us a behind the scenes look into the brain and the everyday operations of Bed MGM. Uh, for the show, um, and then I want to get him on camera. Haven't seen a CEO of, of, of anybody 
Talk to us about in. KG Certified, the things that you're thinking about at the moment for the show, for the outlook. Well, uh, one of the things uh, I wanted to ask you about was gaming. When gaming, I've, I've seen it be kind of, not at its apex, but at a peak to where we're like, oh my God, and then all of a sudden it disappeared. And I just thought that with the interaction of where um, I'm seeing Kai, I'm seeing Juski, I'm seeing people being born out of it, it just needs to be reintroduced. And I'm just wondering if we can put a betting piece to it and then have an event. So I've yeah. been I've been really working on collectibles. I've been really working on um, and, um, innovative things that are not in the space, that are kind mm -hmm. of outside of it, mm -hmm. and uh, bring some value to the, to the company, that's it. KG, your, your view on collectibles, you think that the, that the market's getting deeper? You think it's, it's, it's gonna remain niche? Where, where do you see the outlook for that? Well, right now, my, my view on collectibles is that people are collect uh, collecting and sharing what's in the industry. Mm -hmm. No new things outside the, the industry are being created. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. if so, they've been done at a very slow rate. So it's almost like we're fighting over this pie and we keep, you know, I send you the pie, you send it back to me, we send yep. it to a third person, you get it. No one's growing the pie. No mm -hmm. one's bringing new things in here. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm speaking on collectibles. I think mm -hmm. it's a, I think it's some some potential there to be able to, to dive in there and create some new things that, that's not out there that can actually bring some value. At MGM, you heard it. <laughs> you know what it is. Thank you very much for joining us Thank today. Thank you, man. I see Thanks the fives up here. Huh? Hey, yeah, put that on and go outside. Can, yeah. Can we, see some, of, about. can we see some of the hearts for KG, please? Well, thank y'all, man. Seriously, back here at you. Go. Back at you. You guys have a blessed <laughs> day, and thank you for letting me bother you guys. I appreciate you. Salute. That's awesome. Thank you, Thanks man. So thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. That was fun to see. That was crazy to see at the same time. You know, as, as I've watched betting come into our everyday lives, I have see the what feels like a transparency of betting, you know, because there's so much data now that goes into formulating and wins and losses. Look for the data to be like everything because a lot of the data, a lot of the consistencies in there, people know how to read numbers, people know how to keep track of things. That's all that was for. But believe it or not, that, that has a formula to put out an answer. And a lot of times those answers are, are somewhere in the neighborhood or if not, you know, dead on. So yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just watching how at one point betting felt like this and then now we look up and it's a whole debacle of things. And it probably was like that back then. It just wasn't so transparent like it is now. So yeah, I, I think it's to make you a lot more comfortable with knowing versus, you know, betting with your favorite team and betting with your favorite player you know, not knowing certain specifics. So yeah, I actually think it's better. And for all the people that's out there betting, I always like to say, man, bet responsibly. Real shit. We got a duty and a responsibility to ourselves. Man, I had a great time at Bet MGM, man. Thanks to Mike and his staff and everybody for letting me come through. Uh, again, to Adam, the CEO, for the conversation. And uh, to the Bet MGM staff, man, for just all the great hospitality to me and my crew, man. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep this thing going. Ben and Jim, king of the sports book. And we are. Uh, trying to make a million? <laughs> million.